If there's a team that intrigues me going to this offseason, it's definitely the Toronto Raptors. Because after coming off a season where they extremely overachieved, they were projected only win 35 games and ended up winning 48. This team showed a lot of promise in a lot of areas, but they had some holes that it got exposed, not only in the regular season, but in the playoffs against the Philadelphia 76ers. They didn't have a bench at all, and even though they had somebody like Fred Van Fleet, who's one of the better three-point shooters in the league, they severely lacked three-point shooting against the Philadelphia 76ers. So going this offseason, you thought that those would be the things that they would really try to attack to become better next year and hopefully with the improvements to guys like Scotty Barnes and OJ Nanobu who's still young, overall this team looked to be a little bit better going to the next season, maybe even go into the realm of being a contender again. And with reports coming out that OJ Nanobi, one of this team's more promising young players, seems to not like his role in this team, that puts a huge damper on what the Toronto Raptors are looking to accomplish in this offseason. And I kind of understand why OG didn't like his role. I mean, he's basically the fourth fiddle on offense, even though he was injured a lot this season. And he's one of this team's better perimeter defenders and better shooters on this entire roster. So as of right now, with the Raptors having one of the better young defensive cores in the entire NBA, losing somebody like OG could definitely put a huge damper on that. But the good news is for the Raptors is that OG is tied up in contracts until 2025. The Raptors really don't have to move him unless he pulls a Ben Simmons or something of that nature, which I don't think he will. So as of right now, you can say he's safe and the Raptors hold all the leverage in this situation if he truly does want out. But outside of him, this Raptors team looks poised to be one of the better teams coming next season. So let's talk about what they need to do in this free agency to get better and what they may look like in the season to come. First things first is for the Raptors to evaluate this OG and Anobi situation because as of right now, while they do hold all of the leverage in this situation right now and they own all their draft picks from 2023 to 2028, they could definitely get a good, very good play in return for OG and Anobi and draft capital. Sometimes maybe you don't want to move somebody like OG because you don't know what he may be able to develop in. And as of right now, even though he's consistently had injury issues throughout his career, this season he's averaged 17.1 points, 5.5 rebounds, 2.6 assists, one and a half steals on 44% shooting from the field, 36% from three, which is a kind of a dip from the year before. So you can add that, you can chalk that up to a little bit of inconsistent play with all the injuries. But overall, it looked like he stagnated a little bit. Again, I won't use that against him because again, the injuries. But overall, he's one of the better young players in this league at only 24 years old. The contract he's on right now would keep him on your team until he is 27. And with the Raptors right now, that matches up with a lot of their young core. Precious being 22, Scotty Barnes being 20, Gary Trent Jr. only being 23. Overall, this team looks to all enter their better years of their career at all the same time. The only two outliers being Pascal Siakam and Fred Van Fleet, who are both only 27. And if you decide to keep them, they could be the veterans on this team. And if you decide to move them, these are two all-stars that hold a lot of weight in the trade market. And a lot of teams are looking for guards or a power forward that's very switchable, that can score, that can stretch the floor a little bit. Overall, this team is ripe to make a lot of moves in this free agency, whether it, it, it is to trade, trade OG Ananobi because he doesn't like his role or to trade one of the older guys on this team like Pascal or Fred Van Fleet. So OG not only has a better role on this team, but you get even younger and you fully commit to your young core. Now, if you do decide to move any of the older guys on this team, you fully hand the reins over the team to somebody like Scotty Barnes, who has the most potential to be that guy on a championship roster. But with all that being said, if you move anyone like Fred Van Fleet or Pascal Siakam, not only do you use a large chunk of your offense, you need to make sure you get some shooting to come back with it because the only hole right now in Scotty Barnes' game and some like Precious Achua, who's another young guy who's developing nicely on this team, is their shooting. And right now, you are also going to need some 3 and D players, a backup guard, and somebody else to come off the bench to really give this team some bolstered production because to simply put it, they were the worst bench team in the entire NBA this season with only 25.7 points a game coming from their bench. And I think those problems are a lot easier to fix than most teams because as of right now, if you do increase your bench and their ability to score, you can probably increase their minutes and that would lead to less minutes for the starters so they can get a little bit more rest and lead to less injuries. So guys like OG Ananobi probably won't have to deal with only playing 48 games because of overuse. And something else this team probably should look into getting this offseason 
is a center because even though they are one of the better rebounding teams in the entire nba they simply just don't have somebody in the middle that has the size and ability to switch to compete with some of the bigger players in this league while Preston Chua is definitely an improved player this entire season I expect him to probably take even bigger jumps next year he is simply just 6'9 6'9 very mobile and he's very good in switching situations and he could be a very good power forward for any team especially this one but I don't think you would really want him to go down there especially in the Eastern Conference where sometimes in the playoffs, you're going to deal with big teams like the Boston Celtics, uh, Bam Adebayo in the Miami Heat, Joel Embiid on the 76ers, and a host of other really good big men in this side of the conference. So overall, I'm very interested to see what the Toronto Raptors do plan to do this offseason. Um, I put all trust in Masai Ujiri to make this team better. He's always had great insight on the players to have in this team. He's been the mastermind of this team specifically as of right now. Um, and I do think that he'll make the best decisions to make this team better and for them, for their future to look as bright as possible. But with all that being said, let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. Do you think the Raptors are about to have a very good offseason? Do you think they're about to improve their team to become a contender this year? Or do you think they're just gonna, you know, commit to their young core and commit to growing those guys and may take a slight step back next season? Who knows? But I truly do think this team has an amazingly bright future. But you know the drill, like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. Um, here's another Raptors video I made a couple months ago that I think some people may enjoy if you like this one. But with that being said, this is FLB, that's my time, and I'm out.